My name is Jerry Cook. I'm a trustee here at the college, and on behalf of my colleagues on the board of trustees and the entire college team of employees, welcome to the State of the College 2013 Address, One Community, One College, One Goal. We are delighted for your interest and support of your college, Johnson County Community College. This time, I would like to introduce uh, fellow trustees that are here. Uh, Stephanie Sharp is in the audience, as well as Greg Musil. We appreciate your attendance. I would also like to recognize former, former uh, trustee member and Congressman Dennis Moore is with us today. Uh, Senator Dick Bond, a former Johnson County of the Year. Uh, and if we have missed any others, I, I'm sorry, but thank you for your ongoing support and attendance here at the college. Vincent Van Gogh was credited with saying, if you hear a voice within you say you cannot paint, by all means, paint, and you will silence that voice. Johnson County Community College, a college of first choice, a college where 30% of Johnson County High School students as freshmen attend Johnson County Community College, a college where almost 40% of its students are 24 years old and older, a college where 93% of career program completers find a job within six months, a college where, like Van Gogh says, that if there is a voice inside of you, telling you that education is not for you. By all means, come to Johnson County Community College and you will silence that voice. One community, one college, one voice, a college of first choice. Keep your hand on the plow. Keep your hand on the plow. To address us today for the State of the College Address along with a team of partners in this teaching and learning process, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Joe Sopcich, the fifth president of Johnson County Community College. Dr. Sopcich has been with Johnson County Community College since 1992, serving over the years as executive director of institutional advancement, vice president of institutional advancement and governmental affairs, executive vice president of administrative services, and executive vice president and chief financial officer. His recent achievements include the implement, implementation of a new approach to building the college's $140 million operating budget, resulting in a reduction in expenses and reallocation behind strategic priorities, and the completion of a successful fundraising campaign for the college's new hospitality culinary academy. Dr. Sopcich's honors include a Fulbright, a Fulbright Award in 2011 when he traveled to Russia to present seminars on the merits, merits of American Community Colleges, the College of the Year Award from the Johnson County Community College Foundation in 2010 in recognition of his dedication to college students and programming, and the Faculty Leadership Award in 2008 given by the JCC Faculty Association in recognition of his leadership and support of Johnson County Community College faculty. He has taught as an adjunct in the College Business Division since 2006. Dr. Sopcich earned bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Notre Dame and a PhD from the University of Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, the College of Your President, Dr. Joe Sopcich. Thank you, Dr. Cook. Um, I, I would also like to extend our, our appreciation to Dr. Teal. Um, for a great performance by the JCCC Chamber Choir. And I want to make sure that um, everyone knows I had nothing to do with the song selection of Everybody Hold On. <laughs> I cringed when I heard that. <laughs> um, there's someone in the audience also that I'd like to recognize, and we have plenty of our friends in the community here, but uh, there's one person here that was very involved in getting this college up and running years ago, and we daily benefit from his hard work and dedication. Uh, Gene Hahn. Gene was the director of facilities for many years. Um, it's great seeing him and his wife Jan in the audience. Can we give a round of applause for Gene? Yeah. 
Thank you, Gene. It's good seeing you. Um, you know, I get to go to a lot of these uh, state of this and state of that, state of something speeches. I've attended the state of the school district, the state of the city, the state of the county. It's amazing that anything ever gets done in Johnson County because we're all so busy telling one another what kind of state we're in. I've yet to hear anyone say, hey, we're in a bad state, abandon ship, run for the hills. So in thinking about our college and considering the question, what is the state of our college? I feel extremely confident to say that the state of Johnson County Community College exceeds expectations. Now, I'm not an easy grader. I don't succumb to grade inflation in my class. In fact, I'm a fairly critical evaluator, and you can ask my children about that. So how can I say that the state of Johnson County Community College exceeds expectations? It's because of the people who lead this institution. It's our trustees. It's the people who work here, our faculty and staff. It's the people who come here seeking opportunities to learn and improve their lives. It's the people. And it always has been about the people. It has been about the people from the day the idea for this community college emerged. In the beginning, their names were Billington, Spear, Laner, Robinson, Allen, and Smith. One was a vice president and senior economist at the Federal Reserve Bank in Kansas City. Another was a professor of education at UMKC. One was the past president, League of Women Voters. Another was a partner for Black & Veatch. Another a Title III project director for Elementary School District 110. And one was a pathologist and director of laboratories. They were the original trustees. This group was backed up by names such as Krebs, Lytle, and Craig, all committed citizens who invested their time and energy into what they perceived to be was a real game changer for our county. In 1968, this group, our trustees, published a pamphlet called the infamous Blue Book. The Blue Book included the philosophy and goals, or I guess you could say the vision of this college, and it would inspire this, ins this institution to become the college that it is today. Throughout its 12 pages, and there were only 12 pages, words and phrase phrases, many prescient and foretelling, these words were things such as embrace a broad range of curricula or developing technology in, rapidly changing, in a rapidly changing world all gives emphasis to the importance of continuing education. Or how about academic and vocational should not be antagonistic concepts. Or a college should be available to students who want, need, and can benefit from such programs. They even used the phrase, first choice institution. Ultimately, the book stated, the Johnson County Community Junior College Board of Trustees is committed to the development of a truly different and distinctive institution, definitely attuned to the needs of this community. That was written in 1968. So 45 years later, where are we? Please allow me to share with you what we know. First thing we know is that Dave Krug can play musical instruments and sing. <laughs> but let's get beyond that. Let's talk about accountability. We know that as a college, we're challenging ourselves to strengthen our performance specifically across five key performance indicators, persistence, full-time and part-time graduation and transfer rates, transfer performance, and student satisfaction. We know we're going to measure our performance as an institution, and as the data becomes available, in our, progress, our progress will be reflected on the KPI dashboards for public consumption. The dashboard is now featured on the digital signs in the hallways. Now, I've been told that this is foolhardy, it's high risk, that we're going to look like a bunch of idiots when this, nothing happens, when those needles don't move. But I don't think so. Because one, I'm not foolhardy. And two, I'm totally risk averse. And three, and most importantly, I believe in the people who work here. 
and I'm not going to under underestimate what we can all do. So we can do anything when we put our minds to it, and we're going to prove this, and we're going to move those needles. Patrick is going to talk to us later about this project. Along these same lines, soon to be introduced, will be a new and exciting way to evaluate our performance to ensure that we all provide a strong return to the community for their investment in our institution. Our employees deserve to work in an environment that is challenging and invigorating, one that inspires them to improve their performance and themselves. Substantial training will be given to evaluators in order to implement this process. And we're going to talk about planning, because in higher education, we love to plan. We know that we will soon launch a redo of our strategic plan, and now is the perfect time to renew and update it. This effort will include all of us, members of our faculty, staff, and representatives of our community will all be a part of this critical endeavor. So both of these initiatives, the KPIs and the strategic plan, are critical to the lifeblood of this college and will tie in very nicely with our ongoing accreditation process with the Higher Learning Commission and what's expected at the Kansas Board of Regents. These are absolutely essential for our future. Lastly, we'll challenge the academic branch to create an academic master plan, and this academic master plan will help guide our programming and play a key role in the development of a facilities master plan, something else that needs to get done. Facilities will follow academics. And lastly, and what is certainly the topic of the day, is fiscal responsibility. We know that we have some work to do on our budget. The outcome of this work will ensure that funds will be available in the future for our capital needs, major reconstruction projects, or major construction projects themselves, and emergency contingencies, should that be necessary, as well as the unknowns of the future. Failure to take action now jeopardizes our capacity to address any of the above. And ultimately, that would not be in the best interest of this organization. So we have three options, and this is off script. One, we can spend from the reserve. That's not an option. Two, we can spend what we have and get by on a day-to-day -day basis with no ability to prepare for the future. That isn't good judgment. And lastly, we can do what we're going to do. We're taking a course that will accomplish all the above as we look at our salaries and benefits and try to make them, make them sustainable into the future. We are looking to trim next year's budget, specifically the salaries and benefits line, by $3 million, or 2.7%. These budget adjustments will not be easy. And unfortunately, programs, positions, and people could be and will be impacted. Programs will be eliminated, positions will go away, and people will lose their jobs. You should ask, and rightfully so, who? What are the positions? How many? At this time, I don't have an answer to those questions. But I do know this, that these decisions will be based on an exhaustive process of program evaluation in which a variety of criteria, including enrollments, costs, program vitality, benchmark data versus other organizations, growth potential, just to name a few, will be considered. It is important that we su successfully complete this task at hand. Many other community colleges and universities have already addressed their budget challenges, and they've done so successfully. We will be no exception, and we can do this. Over the past month, we've shared these numbers in research with the campus community. We've been transparent with the research as well as the budget data. We've sought out and welcomed your input and insights. Together, all that has been said will make us stronger and make these objectives realistic and attainable. It's been impressive to experience the response from members of our community when these topics are, are brought up. It's terrific to be a part of a community college where we can speak up, where we can share insights, where we can agree or disagree but we can continue being on the same page as one team in one college in one community. But as always, it comes back to the people. The people who drive up these roads and park in these parking lots every day. The people who come here every day to serve our students 
and this community. So that's what we're doing. And what does the future hold? Where are all those lofty ideals that the Blue Book talked about 45 years ago? I've been asked, do you have any vision at all? I've been asked, is all you can think about are the KPIs and money? Well, I'll ask you to join me now in a little visioning exercise of what I envision, what I envision this community college could be. First, it's a community college where our only goal is to serve others ahead of ourselves, where our energies and intellectual capacity are focused on how we can help our students succeed and how we can best utilize this campus to serve our community. It's a place where people aspire to work, not because it's an easy gig, where little is expected and much is received, but rather a place that is challenging to work, a place where mediocrity is intolerable, a place where accountability is cherished, and ultimately a place where your accomplishments are real and significant, a place where you've proven to yourself how good you really can be, a place that when you go home from a day on campus, you take with you an incredible sense of self-satisfaction and pride in what you did. We hope to be a community college where new ideas and new ways of doing things are implemented in the classroom and not suppressed in the hallway, the office, or the conference room. A place that is fiscally responsible, always with an eye to the future, where decisions are not made based on tomorrow, but instead based on a five to 10 year projection down the road. A place where programs delivered to our community are based on the community need and not the individual not the needs of the individuals who are offering them. It's a place whose reputation throughout the city, county, region, state, nation, and world is beyond reproach, where we are recognized as one of the top community colleges wherever we go, be it Lenexa, Topeka, Washington, New York City, Miami, Mexico, Russia, China, Uganda, all places where we send students today. This could be a place that is highly recognized, not because of our remarkable facilities, but rather because of the incredible ideas and creativity and energies that our colleagues have put into the collective effort of ensuring student success. It's a place where our students not only get quality education and preparation for their futures, but more importantly, where they develop the hope that they will achieve their objectives and have the best life possible for themselves, their family, and for many, their children. I believe, because of the people that I have the good fortune to work with every day, that we can make this vision become a reality. Because this is a place where we turn hope into reality. Because that is what we do here together as one college and one community. Thank you.